In this episode of Zona B's Big Lap Around Australia, we'll explore the Cape from above on a scenic chopper flight, dive into the rich culture and wartime history of the Torres Strait Islands, and visit the five bays of Somerset. We'll get back on the road, heading towards Cape York's east coast, and catch up with old friends who have been living on the road for the last three years. We start our journey at Loyalty Beach, right at the tip of Cape York. After a couple of days exploring the top end's highlights, we decided to get a better perspective of Australia's most northern tip and head out on a scenic chopper flight. All right, we're standing here, just about ready to get picked up by the chopper. He's just flying back in now. So I just encourage anyone, if you get to the tip, we're at Loyalty Beach, Punson Bay also does the same thing. There's just some really good flights around here. Today we'll be heading out Horn Island, around the tip, down around some of the islands and having a good look around the whole top end here. So we've got the advantage of obviously just grabbing one of these ourselves to film with. But I encourage you, if there's two or three people, it makes it really affordable. And I would suggest do it. It's um, I've been here a couple of times and I've kicked myself that last time we didn't do it. So today we're definitely doing it. And just look at the cracking weather we've got behind us. Can't wait to get up there. We'll go to the east coast, I reckon, and we'll go up along the five beaches. And then we'll go from there, we'll go around Albany, Somerset, which is freaking pretty nice. There's nice beaches there. And then we'll go to the tip, and then we'll dart it straight out across the islands. Once we were back on solid ground, we enjoyed a quick lunch before setting out for Somerset and the Five Bays. Somerset, an abandoned settlement founded by the Jardine family in 1863, was established to open up the region for pastoral land and provide a safe haven for passing ships. Today you can visit some grave sites and a few memorials that offer a glimpse into its historical significance. Righto, we're up here at the tip and we're almost at the beach at Somerset. So really cool spot. We're just going to go in, have a look at the grave sites here and just pay our respects and have a look at the history from the early pioneers that came into this area. When you go through this jungle and we just flew over today in the chopper, I no idea how they did that. Incredible, just amazing the journey across Australia, how people pioneered this place. So let's go take a look and uh, so good to be up here. It's a nice warm day. Looking forward to it. Another highlight at Somerset is the Five Beach Drive, a scenic loop that takes you past five stunning beaches before heading back to the PDR. We tackled a few different beaches and checked out some of the headlands, but as the wind picked up, we decided to head back to Loyalty Beach and cook up some dinner. Righto, well here we are. We are actually standing right at the tip of Cape York, basically. We're Loyalty Beach, so still got a few k's up the road. Putson's a little bit closer, but because there's four of us here and a couple other zoners, we decided to come here to Loyalty. So today we just wanted to finish up just showing you guys a bit of what we've been doing. So when we get back at camp, we put a fire on, 
we're cooking a barbecue tonight. I'm using Ziggy Nomad on mine. Pete's actually got the um, Sizzler barbecue. So I just wanted to show you two different types. Obviously, this one's a little bit of a cheaper option. It's a good system as well. Um, I just have a tread box behind it with all my tongs and things like that in here. It works really well, sits on the slide. But it's just really easy by having the outdoor kitchen. So my seasoning and everything's there, my oils, my tongs, it's all here ready to go. So I really appreciate having it that easy. Elisa's inside still working, so it means I have to cook up dinner. It's a pretty, uh, we're doing actually hot dogs tonight, which we don't do very often. So we just had an opportunity today to get some fresh uh, bread buns from the bakery. So we decided let's do that and we're moving tomorrow. So just wanted to make life pretty simple, but this just works so easy. Um, it's the only gas really I use in the whole van. It's full of the barbecue. It's got t space for two, and on this trip, because we went remote and we're going to be away for a while, I'm carrying the two bottles. So up until now, I think we haven't done a lot of barbecue cooking. I've actually been doing a lot on the fires and stuff, but today it's actually 31 degrees up here, so we just decided to do on the barbecue. As I said, we're moving tomorrow, just make life easy, but we're looking forward to getting in a bit more roadside cooking on our... I've got a little Osbro, I really appreciate using it, and some charcoal or over a fire. You'll see us and Russ doing a bit of that. Terry tends to cook a lot of his stuff on the induction with a skittle plate. Um, works really well. He um, he likes his steaks done really well like that, and he does a really good job of it. If you've ever had one with him, you'll know what I mean. It's pretty similar to his coffee. While the sausages were cooking, we watched the sunset over the ocean just 50 metres from our campsite. These sunsets are one of the highlights of this campground, so we took a stroll down to the beach to fully enjoy the view. The following morning we set out early to explore the Torres Strait Islands. From the Seychelles jetty we boarded a boat to visit three of the 274 islands. Horn Island, Thursday Island and Rocco Island, a former pearling hub. It takes about an hour to get to Horn Island. Here we are on the Torres Straits, how good is it? So we've just arrived, Horn Island. Boat brought us over to Swan, took us a bit of an hour, so it was a nice um, calm day. Beautiful water, just incredible, and the reefs around here. So we're just gonna go and look at the War Memorial, and then we're gonna head over to Thursday Island. So it's gonna be a good day, and it's just cracking weather, so good times here in the Torres Straits. A short walk from the jetty, we visited the local museum where we admired some indigenous artwork and World War II artifacts from a time when the army was stationed here. It was a fascinating glimpse into the Torres Strait cultures and Australia's wartime past. Next, we crossed the channel to Thursday Island, the heart of the Torres Strait. Once there, we hopped on a taxi tour that showed us the island's highlights, including the famous World War II guns and lookout. And let me tell you, the view from this lookout is absolutely stunning with breathtaking views of the bay and surrounding reefs. After a lunch break on Thursday Island, we set off for our final stop of the day, Rocco Island. It's only a 20 minute boat ride from Seisha and about an hour from Thursday Island. Rocco Island is well known for its long floating jetty made of logs, bamboo, floating barrels and hardwood. It's definitely a bit of a challenge to walk this one, but the experience is well worth it. 
well, if I have too many drinks, how am I going to get back? <laughs> well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Rocco Island was once a pearl farm, known for cultivating South Sea pearls. Now it's all about glamping accommodations and day tours, sharing the little slice of paradise with visitors. With a full cocktail menu on offer, we grabbed a drink and explored the island's history. After that, it was time to head back. Just as we got back on the jetty, we watched some local fishermen feeding bull sharks, giving us a perfect reminder of what's lurking in the waters up here. The next morning, we kicked off our Cape trip with a good coffee. Knowing we had a big drive ahead, we packed up, checked everything, and got ready for the road, prepared for some rough corrugations. All right, well, here we are at Loyalty Beach. We're about to head back to Bramwell. We've been up here for a week now. Really had a great time. What we're doing is just double checking our wheels again before we go. So just got my Interflate out. Um, just want to check how Pete's tyres are. He's got 34s on this one, so quite large tyres. So we can let them down quite a bit. And what we've found is a lot of people we've met along the way absolutely do not let their tyres down enough. So something we don't want to make the mistake of. Always good to check them cold too. So just having a look here. Yeah, you're on about 28, Pete. So that's good, mate. Well done. You've killed it. You've done it well. So that's what's really nice. I'll just drop it a tiny bit just to show you. But if you basically just, you can let this go really easy and then it equalizes and it'll sort the both wheels out. So you can see there, we've got a little bit of bulge and tires are really good. So it'll work really well for us. With our tire pressures adjusted, we headed back to Bamika to fill up our cars and diesel tanks. Once we had everything sorted, we made our way to the Jardine River Ferry to continue our journey down the Cape towards the East Coast. Our goal for the day was to reach Bramwell Station where we were looking forward to catching up with some good friends. So we've just turned up here at Bramwell Station. We've uh, just come back down from the tip this morning from Loyalty Beach and we're just meeting up with our good friends, Wayne and Elisa Jeffers. So, so good to be able to catch up with them. They've been on the road for over three years now. So last time I saw them was at the Brisbane Caravan and Camping Show. And um, yeah, said we'd meet each other up the Cape here. So that's what we're doing. And we'll go and catch up, have a good night with these guys around here at Bramwell. She's a little bit overcast, which is good. Hasn't rained, as you can see but um, just had a really good run down the PDR there this morning, a couple of bit of road work, so they're making it a bit prettier, but there's some good corrugations in there to test everything out, so that was good. Tire pressures have been good, we've checked everything. We all pulled up and just went through everything a little bit halfway down this morning, just to give Inc a bit of a run over, but we're just here one night, unfortunately, and then we head off across the East Coast, and we're gonna go out to Chili Beach, so we're really looking forward to that. So. We've done all the west and now we're gonna go back down the eastern side. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. It'll definitely be windy there. If it's blowing here, it's gonna be blowing down at Chili Beach, but it's still worth dropping into. It's such a great spot. Beautiful beach there at Chili Beach. And um, we're actually going to a new campground. So we'll have a look at that and give you an idea of how that was. Anyway, look forward to tonight and having a few drinks with these guys. We settled in and gave the cars a thorough check after dealing with some pretty rough corrugations on the last stretch of the PDR. Once we wrapped up all the mechanical work, it was time to cook up dinner. We took the opportunity to unwind, relax and catch up with our friends.
As the sun set, we enjoyed some drinks and shared stories from the road, appreciating the good company at the end of a long day. All right, well, I'm my good mate Wayne, so thanks for coming and catching up, mate. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely cool. So Wayne's just come across from, where did you come today? Uh, I come up from Weeper. Yeah. Up so, to Greenwell. Yep, and so we were obviously up the tip. We were at Weeper a couple of weeks ago. Wayne's just gone in there. He's making, this is your first, which surprises me with you. Yeah. You've been everywhere. You're everywhere, man. Yep. yep. First time? First time. First time on the Cape. Yep, first time on the Cape, and that'll make the north, south, east, west, centre, all the corners by the um, Savoy Generals plus Little Island, North, South, East, Western Centre. Yeah, you've been Done. pretty much everywhere. And um, so Wayne's in a 21 foot Sojourn. What's yours, a 23 model? 23 model. Yeah, so you've done a few miles. How many, do you know how many uh, Ks you've roughly 24 to 25,000 now in just over 12 months. Yeah, which is good. And like I said, you've been through some of the roughest tracks and some of the ugly stuff. Yep, yep, we've definitely done that. We've only got uh, one real major road left to go and that's the Great Central. Yeah, which I'd love to do with you at some stage, mate. So Elisa uh, and Wayne travel full time. What's that roughly been now? Three, three going years. Going on three years. Yeah, so that's really cool, mate. So we appreciate it. And you do a lot of stuff behind the scenes people may not know work a lot um, with Sone to help on the forum and you really own the page that looks after all the owners. So Wayne's pretty much the guy, if you're having any sort of electrical issue, people tend to generally wing, ring Wayne or message Especially, Wayne. Yeah, after hours and weekends yeah. when, when, the, when the, the crew down in Coolum aren't, aren't working. Yeah, and Wayne's been really good. We've known each other for a fair while now. One of the great things with Wayne, he came up and helped us design when we put Starlink into the vans. He came up and had a look at all the stuff. He's walked the line, um, so he's a really good customer to have. But also more than that, he's just a really good life um, mate. So we got to know each other, and I know um, I, I did some pretty cool trips with yourselves. A special one for me was when we were over at um, what's it called there? Fox Bar. Um, yeah, Fox Bar Falls, and it was actually a place where I sort of learnt that Dad had gone, and um, I'll never forget that day. And I remember you guys had just headed off, and we'd had a really good time there. So I've got some shots that Elisa took. It'll always be pretty special to me, mate. Yeah. So there, there um, was a good. Uh, it was Easter. Yeah, it was, an Easter. So it was, was a, a really good camp. I know you uh, tried to bog up their yard. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Well, left your mark. Yeah, where yeah. do you go? <laughs> but mate, what's um? You've changed over to the Manager Hundred. That's been working good for you. Absolutely. Uh, I'd sort of nutted out the, the few dramas we might have been having with the Manager Thirty, 30 yep. and the BCDCs, uh, not quite talking to each other. So with collaboration with um, Red Arc, I've been on, I was on the phone with them a fair bit. We worked out a, a, a fix for it, and that's been working fine. And then um, I got basically sent one of these, and here Wayne, uh, see if you can make this work. Yeah, and, yeah. it's been good, eh? Yeah, in Sejuna was probably not the best place to do it, but yeah. it was, well, that's where I received it. So yeah, Sejuna. Yeah, Sejuna right, eh? that's right. Yes. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So a day and a half, and I had it nutted out and in, and, and I'll tell you what, it is the best piece of kit. Yeah, yep. that's good. I'm glad you've had that. Now, you've also run a 200 series chop um, with a canopy. Now, you know, you've done how many cars? Nearly 100,000 of them? Yeah, 94, 95,000. Yep. How's car. that all? Like, oh, absolutely. Happy yeah, very happy with that. And uh, being able to go with the bigger weights, the 4495 and 8.2 ton GCM, yep. has helped us because I can carry a lot of fuel, yep. a lot of water, and um, now with these vans here, between the van itself and the car, I've got over a hundred amps, a uh, thousand amps of battery. Yeah. So and uh, three inverters. So that's something that's different to everyone here. Does everything differently, but you guys basically do everything electrically. Yeah, electric. Yep. So you use air fryers. Two air fryers at a time, maybe <laughs> two two air fryers and an induction cooktop at yeah. the same time. So, and so yeah. what you're doing is linking your car with yeah. this system. Oh, I, oh yeah, I'll, well, not really. I just want to lead out. I can with you. Yeah, so, but I'm, I'm looking at putting a second bigger in, inverter in the van. Yeah. But I've just got to work out the logistics on that. Yeah, and Elisa also does a bit of stuff behind the scenes for us, calls customers. It's really cool. Tonight she's meeting Liz and Russell who that you guys actually communicated with, talked about vans and led them through that journey. So it's one of the really nice things that these guys do as well, why they've been on the road. Um, what's what's um, like your best advice for people traveling these sorts of roads? Like today we have pretty bad car roads. Tire pressures, yeah, tire what do pressures, you do, mate? It's 25 hot, or that's about 20 cold. Uh, if you look at it in the big picture, a tire is worth $500. A lot of people talk about sidewall damage. I don't because a tire is worth $500, 160, 100, $200,000 caravan. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. You run them down to 
and with the air suspension, running them down to 25 psi, get the car down as low as you possibly can do, and it just irons it all out. People ask me about corrugations, it's just another bump in the road to me now. Yeah, um, and it's something you've done well, eh? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've pretty well, I won't say I've mastered it, but yeah, we've, we've, you know, we can look at a road now and go, oh, yeah. yeah. And then speed's another thing, because up here on the PDR, some of the guys who are going past us, they're just sliding because they're on the marbles, and it's just, they've got to get from A to B in two weeks, I understand that because I used to work and that, but take your time. You know, you're putting yourself and everybody else in, in lives in danger. Yeah, hundred percent. So that's one of the key things. I think the biggest thing we've tried to encourage people is your tire pressures. Obviously, dust's a hard thing uh, for anyone to sort of get out of. My 300s actually getting quite a bit of dust in the back. I've been quite surprised compared to the 200s. I actually think I'm getting more in that thing, which yeah. is interesting. Uh, but that's fine, like we'll work on a few things there, I think. Now one of the main reasons I'm doing a chop is because of you, because I've just seen the difference it makes. Um, I, so I'm really happy with the way that car handles. Obviously going to the new Summit, I'm going to be about that 4.2. So I definitely wanted to go for a longer vehicle. Now you were really good when you said, what's the, the main issues is like servicing, obviously it's a longer car. Vehicle. You just got to, when you're going into smaller places, smaller towns and stuff, you, you've got to actually talk to your service agents and find Let out and know. say, hey look, the girl, she, she's a big girl, yeah. so she's longer than a normal car. It's, yeah. it's a, basically nearly the same size as an American truck, yeah. except she's a bit narrow, about 30 mil narrower, um, and she can weigh up about the same, so I try and lighten it down. I talk to them, Yeah. Uh, I had brakes done in cans, and the guy said, oh, I can only go to four tonnes, so I, I basically emptied it, yeah, emptied it out. Yep. I've drained the fuel tank right down because I can carry 280 litres. Yeah. So I emptied that right down, dropped the water, all the water out of the tank, and yeah, had no problems. But you just got to be a little bit smart about things. Yeah, and I think what's good about you, Wayne, like you've said it, if you're just travelling a bit, the wagon's fine. If you're really going to be a full time on the road right. like you guys have done, and actually worked on the road and actually lived it to the fullest, that has been a brilliant setup. And yep. that's what we're sort of looking at with having the. Chop 300, um, we won't have a canopy as such, but we've sort of got a few differences in this new Summit series coming, where we've sort of been able to carry a bit more in it, mm. push that weight to 4.2 on it. So that makes it a bit easier as well. Yes, it will. Um, but biggest things other than that, like just maintenance, like I've seen you today, grease gun. Yeah, what's, yep. what's the sort of key things you would say to people to carry? Uh, yeah, just to maintain yeah, yeah, just, it. Yeah, you just need a, a couple of screws, a screwdriver, pliers, that sort of Just keep something, I, I go overboard because yeah, today I was actually working on your car. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got heat guns and soldering yep. irons and stuff like that. Most people wouldn't carry that. But just due to the fact of my nature, who I am, that's what I carry. But if you carry a grease gun, because oh, when I come back down here or even a weeper, yep. oh, not a weeper, sorry, uh, when I'm at the, uh, the tip, I'll crawl underneath it. Yeah, I'll grease it. Give it, it a grease. Yeah. I'll give it a grease because basically it's been doing a lot of hard work. Yeah, so for sure. In, in a really it, bad look conditions. Look after it. It'll look after me. Correct. And I'm the same. Like air cleaners, we tossed them in the bin when we got to the top. Yep. We keep changing them out. You tend to run the air ram head. Yep. Um, but I change filters. that out every day. Yeah, there you I've go. I've got four of them, and then by the you time I get, them. I just change them out, clean them, re-oil them, and then just reuse and away them again. You go. Uh, air cleaner. What are you doing? Air as cleaner. Far as basically, I just I inspected genuine. every couple. Genuine. Yeah. I only run genuine. Me filters too. in my car and on the same other things like tires and stuff you're just sort of looking after them they yeah yeah they look at you i look after them they look after me yeah so, yeah these ones here were new when i started the, the trip around when we left june last year they've got well, 45,000, 50,000 k's on them now so been no worries no worries yeah yeah, but, yeah I'm, a, I'm a bit of a cooper's freak so yeah and that's fine everyone yeah, has their brands brand. and things but that's not a problem uh last but not least what's sort of your favorite thing mate Traveling, not so much just vans, but what's your favourite uh, thing? What we're doing right now, well, we got, got uh, we got five vans here. Yep. And we just pull up, and this has happened to us constantly. Yeah. We just pull up, and all of a sudden, you just start talking to people. None of them has to be a, a zona. You nah. start talking to people. We're having and, people out there yeah, camping. And other people are out there, and it's the weirdest places you can pull up. Yeah. And uh, we've made some lifelong friends now. Yeah. Uh, they a couple of uh, two uh, lots of zone owners now that we meet up. Travel yep. for six weeks, if we go our separate ways, we meet up again. And yeah, well, and, and you've had a fairly long um, standing, not just relationship with Zion, but caravanning. You were in the um, we Lotus the group, you were in tents, you, you've, you know, we've all progressed. But yeah. I think the cool thing is, I've seen you help anybody, it's not just mm. 
our demographic of you know our vans, and I think we'd like to always think the same. So. Yeah, well, yeah, it's just someone's in trouble. You you stop, you ask them, you you're okay. Yep, and they move yeah. you on, or they or they need a hand. So uh, it's just a little bit of common courtesy. Yep. Uh, we've uh, birds full tracks. People were broken down there. We had a satellite phone back when satellite phones worked. Yeah. Um, yeah, we Help just yeah we helped them out with that. Now you just grab your Starlink and yeah, yeah you can and do it. that's another thing that we just wouldn't live without. Now. Nah, Starlink changes yeah. the game, eh? But it's no, it. mate, I really appreciate it. I want you to get back and enjoy it. Uh, thank you so much for having a bit of a chat to us today, and we really appreciate it, mate. No problem. Thanks, Good buddy. To see you, my friend. Okay. In the next episode, we'll make our way towards Cape York's east coast, exploring Chili Beach and some epic campsites. We'll tackle the famous Cal Power Crossing, check out Lakefield National Park and test our van suspension. Then it's back to civilization for a visit to one of Australia's most iconic pubs. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out a moment of Zone RV's Big Lap Around Australia.